Right, well, thank you for coming to join us again. Um, what we're going to do this week is a twist in the tale. And I'm going to talk about Dr. James Barry, who was born in County Cork in the year 1789 or 1795. James Barry came from a very poor background and he always wanted to become a doctor. Now the thing about it was if you didn't have the money, you couldn't do it. And his father died when he was quite young. So a friend of the family who was a doctor decided that he would train young James to be a doctor. And he trained him in the night and he used to go do it in the day. And in the end, James Barry became a doctor at the age of 22. But because he was inexperienced, he couldn't get a position in any of the doctors or surgeries as he used to call them then. So he decided to join the military. And he joined the military as an ensign. Now an ensign is a naval rank which depicts the lowest commissioned rank. It was also in the army and the ensign usually looked after the colours. He went everywhere, overseas, he'd done his work and he steadily got promoted. Claim to fame that he had was he was one of the first to amputate a leg using aseptic technique and the casualty lived. He was also the first to complain about old Florence in the Caribbean uh, because where the hospital was uh, and if you look at it and if, if you just read a little bit about the medical conditions in the Crimea, part of the hospital was in the sewers so it was out of the gunshot uh, the artillery and old Florence with a magic light didn't spend all that much time out there she came back to get funding so they could carry on, but she left the women there to look after the sick. He turned around and said at one stage that Florence Nightingale and her team basically killed more of our men than the Russians, which is very, very easy to believe. Because if you look at some of the wars, for every 10 men injured, you're talking about nine are self-inflicted, where they give themselves trench foot, immersion foot. Um, a lot of them used to take salt tablets, which was issued. But instead of taking one, they take two or three and they get themselves a gallstone so that means they have to be evacuated. And look at things like that, or when they've done a urine test, they pinch their gum and get a little bit of blood in there so it come up as something wrong. These are all things that scams that went on in the military. He also quarantined an island for 12 months because of a rampant disease that was on the island. No one died because of the treatments given. No one came onto the island and no one left the island. But there was one exception. A doctor from Edinburgh came on to find out if young James needed any help and assistance. He stayed on there for a 
a bit. And I'll come back to a bit. And he left when everything was settled down. Now, James Barry became Director General of the Army Medical Services. Basically, that's the top man on the Chief of General Staff. He revamped the medical services and he brought it up to a state that was higher than the state civilian or military at that time. So they started to get some quality. Had a manservant that went everywhere with him. And you're talking about military life lasting 55 years. So it was a commitment from start to finish. Remember now, he was in the forces 55 years. And he was taken ill and he was on his way out. I don't mean through the door, but I mean through the planet. He was dying. And the Chief of General Staff and his team went up to see him and find out if he needed anything or do anything. And he expired. Gone. And he turned around to his man servant and said, prepare Dr. James for burial. And they left. And as they left, they went down the stairs. And as they were going down the stairs, the man servant come running down saying, Ibi Shibi, Ibi Shibi. And they just couldn't understand what he was saying. And he was very excited. So they followed him back upstairs and went into James Barry's room and had a look. And they found out that James Barry was a woman. And she was born, as I say, in Ireland. And her name was Jemima Mary Ann. Lot different to James, isn't it? The reason it came out that they turned around and sent the body then for a post-mortem uh, to find out if he was a, a hermaphrodite. And I say hermaphrodite, that means both sexes in the same body. And when the post-mortem results come out, they found out that at some stage in her military career, she had a child. And the only time that she could have had a child was when she quarantined this island when no one died and a doctor from Edinburgh come on to it. They now think that that child was smuggled off the island and we still call him Dr. James Barry. Carried on with his work. Uh, I did read somewhere that there is a team now going through the archives uh, as, it, as it get released to find out on the census and stuff if there was a child that sort of sprung up on the census or one of the other ways of doing the addresses to try to find out if it could be related. Now, if you go to the Army School of Tropical Medicine, there is a James Barry room. And the James Barry room is only to be used by female commissioned officers of the Royal Army Medical Corps. No one male-wise is allowed in there. So technically, if you'd done a murder and you were a captain in the RMC and you got into that room, no one could come in after you. You had to stay there. I don't know what these days if, if a woman, you see, turned up. But again, she wouldn't be commissioned into the forces. So 
there's a, 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 there's a big twist in that story. Um, you can ask questions like, when you joined the Navy, you would have had a medical. You also had a doctor's certificate stating that you had partial alopecia. Now, partial alopecia is loss of body air on some parts of the body, partial. He was also taught to always wear a eye neck scarf because he got no Adam's apple. And he was also shown how to bind his chest so he didn't have lady bits. So you're talking about a lot of deception, but the thing is, 55 years, medicals, he must have gone in. When the doctor came to examine him, he must have poked him in the eyes and just said, okay. But that is Dr. James Barry. Very well known. Apparently had a, a very, very violent temper, especially if he'd done things wrong. I'm not going to say no more about Old James Barry. Um, there is a book called The Perfect Gentleman that came out that I read oh, years ago. But there's another book that's come out since it's been updated. And they're also doing another book with uh, information that's been released from the archives. So the doctor that was a female in the forces. A real good read. And you sometimes think how she got away with it. Well, there's a photo in there on the back of the book. And she's standing by a, a man's servant. One about five foot odd, but she was so ugly you could rent her face out for ratting. If I can say that. And that's why no, I suppose no one sort of challenged her. So that's about James Barry. I'm not going to say no more. The only thing I am going to say for myself and the team is stay safe, stay well, stay indoors, and let's get this virus knocked on the head. I've had my flu job. I'm waiting for the next job, and as soon as that comes out, I'll be in there. Okay? Stay safe. Look after yourself. See you next time.